Good morning, my dear students. Today I shall discuss on the topic gill symptom. Pond disappears in the aquatic medium, and it uh, carries and it carries three sets of organ for the purpose. That is the lining of the branchiostegoids, epipodoids, and the gills. And all these three organs are enclosed within a special chamber within the cephalothorax that is known as the gill chamber. Now the gill chamber is covered by the lateral extension of the carapace, just like the fish gill. Fish gill, all of you know that's a covered by a particular operculum. In case of prawn, the gills are also covered by extension of the carapace and that is known as gill cover or the branchiostegoids. The gill chamber can open, the gill chamber can open ventrally, anteriorly and the posterior. Now, you know that the respiratory organs of the gills are the three category. What are the category? Branchiostegoids, epipodoids, and the gills. The first one, it's the lining of the branchiostegoids. You see here, the branchiostegoids. The richly vascular membrane of the branchiostegoids that contains so many uh, blood vessels that serves as a respiratory surface through which the gaseous exchange takes place. Now, come to the second one, epipodites. There are three pairs of epipodites are present that are regarded as simple gill. And their presence in the anterior part of the gill chamber. They are thin and lip-like membrane structures supplied with blood. They are the outgrowths of integument of the coxal segment of the maxillipeds. The first pair of the epipodites, the first pairs of the epipodites are larger and, and that is the bilobed in structure. Now, they come in the contact of the water that carry out the respiratory functions, just like the primitive gills. Now, come to the main uh, topic of your syllabus, gills. You know that the gills are regarded as primary respiratory organ. On each lateral side of the cephalothorax, beneath the branchiostegoids, there are eight gills. There are eight gills. If you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So only seven gills. You see eight gills? No. You did not see the eight number of the gills. This is the eight gills that is hidden by the second gill that is hidden by the second gills. On its lateral sides of the cephalothorax and beneath the branchiostegoids, there are eight gills which attach to the thoracic wall by a gill root. And seven of these gill slits are serially arranged. You see here, serially arranged. While the eight gill, while the eight gills remain concealed under the second gill. Second gill. The gills, are crescent shape structures and their sizes increases gradually from the anterior to posterior directions. If you see the anterior gills, it is a, a small in size. And if you uh, see the posterior portion of the gills, that is a larger in the size. And each gill, each gill consists of, consists of a narrow vertical axis and contain two rows and contain two rows of gill plates. The gill plates of each row that arrange just like the pages of books, just like the pages of books. Now, according to their position and mode of attachment, the gills are three types. The gills are three types. What are the types? Podobrank, arthrobrank, and pleurobrank. Podo, that's a coming from Greek word. Podos mean foot, and brank mean gill. They are attached to the coxa of the Second maxillipeds, the arthrobrank. Arthros mean jointed. They attached with the arthroidal membrane of the maxillipeds. And the pleurobrank. Pleuros mean sides. They attached with the outer border of the thorax and covered the articulating surface of the walking legs. Now, what are the gills? Podobranks, uh, arthrobrank, and pleurobrank. In prawn, the first gill, that is a podobank, and the second gill, and the eight gill, the eight gill hidden by the second gill, that is, that is the arthrobank, and remaining five gills, and remaining five gills are the pleurobranks. Now, 
if you see the histological structure of the grill that gives host uh, the following layers what are the layers this is the outermost layer the outermost layer that is the cuticle and this is a inner layer the inner layer that is the epidermis and the innermost layer the innermost layer that is a connective tissue mass now each gill plate consists of mono layer of two types of alternately arranged cells what are the cells some cells are the pigmented cells and some cells are the transparent cells now these cell layers these cell layers remains covered by the cuticle on either side so histologically each gill consists of three layers outermost layer this layer is a outermost layer and this is the innermost layer and if you see this is a connective tissue mass that presents in the middle central layer so this is the basic histology of the gill now uh, if you see the blood supply uh, you see here uh, the two lateral uh, channel you see here this is a one and this is a another one this is a lateral uh, long channels and you see here this is a median uh, longitudinal channels and that pass throughout the length of the gill blades now uh, these two lateral uh, channels that interconnected by so many so many numerous transfer channels so many numerous transfer channels now uh, from uh, each lateral channels from each lateral channels a cylinder marginal channel is given to each plate that's when these channels covers the entire gill after covering the entire margin of the plates now the marginal channels opens within the median channels this is a beauty this is a beauty of this type of the gills now the gill receives the gill receives the gills receives oxygen poor blood that is a deoxygenated blood through 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 which through apparent branchial channels through apparent branchial channels now now each branch of the apparent channels opens within the transverse channels opens within the transverse channels from transverse channels blood passes to the lateral longitudinal channels and is distributed subsequently within the gill plates through the marginal channels now after oxidation the blood from marginal channels and then return to then return to median channels then return to median channels and after oxidation the blood from marginal channels return to median channels and then to efferent branchial vessels which convey into the heart so this is a course of circulation if you see here this is a apparent branchial channels then transverse channels and then lateral uh, longitudinal uh, channels and you see this a marginal channels and after oxidation is done here and then uh, oxygen rich blood enters into the uh, branchial channels and uh, then to heart this is a blood circulatory systems uh, that happens uh, in the gill of the prong now what are the mechanism of the respiration basically the balers that is a uh, scaphopharynephritis of the maxillary and uh, exopodites of the maxillary plates by their movement that produce a current of the water that passes that passes through the gill chamber now water enters in the gill chamber gill chamber in which side through posterior and lateral sides and that passes out that passes out that passes out through the anterior end that passes out anterior end that's mean within the gill chamber water water enters through uh, posterior and lateral uh, sides and passes out through the anterior end now during the flow of the water during the flow of the water water contact with the gill plates and you know that the uh, bronchostegites that contains a high amount of the blood uh, vessels gills and the epipodites that are buffed by the water so gas is exchanged to place now the dissolved oxygen of the water that diffuses in the blood and and carbon dioxide from the blood diffuses in the water so the oxygenated blood returns to the heart and supply to the body part this is a very simple mechanisms of the respirations now uh, these are the books biology of the animals and the modern textbooks of the zoology uh, by uh, and sharing uh th these are the sites uh, by particular the sites and uh, books i have prepared my uh, next materials and presentations thank you everybody